my name is Brandon Gartner. I'm Chief of Operations for Onzo County uh, Schools, and we are here to kind of share some information with you about the redistricting um, of uh, Dixon High School, moving some kids to Southwest. I know we have a couple of uh, our friends who came from last time. Good to see you again. Um, if you have any questions along the way, please ask. I'm going to share, share with you about a 10 minute presentation just to give you some details about um, you know, the, the redistricting process, the decisions and why they were made and how they were made. And then we'll give you an opportunity after the presentation if you have any questions, any comments, any feedback, anything you want to share. This is being recorded tonight, so anything that you share, I'll be sharing with our board members who will be making the final decision on these redistricting lines. Um, also do want to acknowledge before we start that I know um, that this is not an easy process for your children. The ones that are possibly going to be affected by this as someone who moved around a lot as a child, changed a lot of schools, I know that it's difficult and it's not something that we take lightly at all. Um, you know, we, we, everybody who works in the school system is involved with the school system does it because they care about kids. And we know that this is how this can impact kids. So we want to be as, as upfront and everything as possible and take your thoughts and everything you have because they are your children and, and be able to take that and help that form our decision making. Uh, just some real quick background about Dixon High School. It was originally built in 1967 when Dixon Sneeds Ferry was just a little fishing village. Um, they have added on to it numerous times all the way up through 2008, which was the science and art wing uh, was the most recent addition. Once we uh, tore down Dixon Middle School and annexed that into part of Dixon High School, it raised the capacity of Dixon High School to 957 students. That's how many students this building is meant to accommodate. Um, its population and the second month ADM was 1,159. ADM is average daily membership. We use the second month of school because that is typically our most, that's when we have the most students that are registered in our district. So we use that for our planning. So it is a little bit lower than that right now. It's not at 1,159 right now. It is just under 1,100. Um, but again, that is still significantly above the 957 that the building is meant to. A lot of th questions have come up about construction. And yes, school construction is something we, we have to consider at this point. You know, you live here, you see Sneeds Ferry, you know what's happening. You know how many developments are coming or are going up right now. But when we have a nearby school district that has room, you now we have to be responsible. We, we use public money, we use your money. Uh, the county uses your money to build these schools and build these structures. And when we have room somewhere else, we have to consider that first before we build a building. And Southwest High School has a capacity of 1,016 students in their second month ADM with 711. Again, it's lower than that now, it's under 700, so they have room for a lot of students. So the process for redistricting, when we started, went to the board, said, hey, this is something we wanna consider, took it to the board, here's some options we'd like to redistrict, um, we'd like to research some options we worked with a group out of NC State that helps us to draw those lines. Where, to kill, where are people living? What are, the mo what are your population projections? Um, efficiency in transportation. A lot of people get confused because I go to this school, but I think I'm closer to this school. But when you actually get on a bus and have to wind through all the neighborhoods and pick up all the other kids, the other school is actually your better option because it's a shorter trip. Um, once we did that, we created these maps as you see. Uh, made a few changes based on some feedback from our transportation department. And these are the final maps we've come up with that we've presented to the board that I got permission to come to present to all of you to get your feedback and your thoughts and your, and your uh, opinions on what's going on. So we have two scenarios that we came up with. Scenario one, just to give you an idea, this is Southwest High School, this is Dixon High School. Everything below this red line right now is Dixon High School's district, everything. Uh, whoops, let me go back, sorry about that. So this is all Dixon High School right now and it goes down into Sneeds Ferry. I didn't include that because we're not talking about redistricting there. To give you a better look at that area, um, all of this is gonna follow, these are all parcels, they're all property lines. So it's not, there's no roads or rivers we're following right there, it's just property lines except for here and this is just cutting straight through farm fields. There's nothing out there. 
that's one possible scenario that we're looking at. It's a very wide area because this is a very sparsely populated compared to down here towards Dawson Cabin Road. This is the second scenario we're looking at. Again, Southwest High School, Dixon High School, and this is the area that we're looking at. This is all Dixon. And this white area in here is all federal land and stuff. That's, it's, it's Stony Creek, it's Stump Sound. Over here is Lejeune, so that's stuff that we can't build on. And just to give you a better look, uh, the border here basically follows Dawson Cabin Road to, um, I think it's Hawes Run, then comes up and to Harris Creek Loop Road. And those are the two scenarios that we are looking at to redistrict. Again, this is a much smaller area, but it's a much more populated area. Anything that is not purple on this map, all these students would continue to attend Dixon High School. Just like on this one, anyone south of this line would continue to attend South uh, Dixon High School. Um, once we've taken your feedback, we'll take all the information we have to the board for their consideration and they will make the final decision on what our maps will look like moving forward. And this again, this has been mentioned a number of times, I wanna clarify and I'll clarify this again, this won't happen until the 24, 25 school year. We want to give those that are affected plenty of time to make the adjustments or anything that they need to do. Um, both of the scenarios we have will redistrict about 200 students to Southwest High School from Dixon. Um, one thing in the interest of transparency is Dixon Middle School. Dixon Middle, uh, Southwest Middle School is at capacity. There's no room for any more students, meaning we won't be able to move feeder lines. So Dixon Middle School's students, so if we go back, all this is Dixon Middle School too. Dixon Middle School and Dixon High School. If we change this, these students would not be able to go to Dixon Middle School at this time. And again, the redistricting for Southwest is 24-25. That's basically, in a nutshell, what is going on. Um, the rest of the time is yours to share your thoughts, to ask questions, um, your feedback, anything you would like to share at all. Or it's gonna be a short evening, one of the two. <laughs> yes, sir. I, uh, I've got a garden in here, but, uh, but all my kids have grown up in this area and they've all gone to school. Mm -hmm. uh, when did they start bringing the I, I really don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to research that. Um, the the last time there was a redistricting that kind of involved Dixon. It was Dixon Richlands Southwest. That whole area. I think that was 2012. We did that because I do remember there was a. We, we had a public hearing at Nine Mile Church and all things like that. So I think it was right around then. Yeah. Well, I said, my, all my, all my kids are going to do some stuff. And that's about the time everything started exploding up around here. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten worse and worse and worse. It is. So I'm, I'm at the end of this. I've got my kids got three years left. And, and she's out of here and stuff. Uh, with the amount of kids that are in the big school system right now, mm -hmm. and we're bringing more and more houses in there, and we're bringing more and more kids to come to those houses. Yes, sir. In another year, this place is just going to be absolutely ridiculous. It is. Um, and we do recognize that. Um, why, are we, why are we waiting another year? If this has been something that's been growing for four or five years, well, you know, I, why it wasn't started before, you know, I'm relatively new to this position, so I can't tell you why it wasn't done until now. Um, but I do know the superintendent wanted to give people time to adjust to this change. It is, for a lot of our kids, it's a massive, massive change. I mean, like you said, they've been going to Dixon their whole lives, and now we're saying, you're going to go to Southwest maybe. So we want people to take the time to be able to make any, any kind of arrangements they can make. 
Um, it'll allow time for our seniors that are here, or juniors that'll become seniors, they'll be able to graduate, you know, won't just drop that on them uh, like a hammer. You know, you thought you were gonna go to Dixon next year, it's May, now all of a sudden you're going to the Southwest. So we want people to be able to have time to make those adjustments. Mm -hmm. She'll do her sophomore year here. If the redistricting started, those sophomores that come to her, they will go back to Southwest for junior year. Well, so she's going to be a sophomore for the 23-24 school year, the one coming up. She's going to be a sophomore. Well, what I can tell you is that um, we had a, a much bigger crowd the other last week we had our meeting and one thing that they talked about was wanting to be able to grandfather those students in that if they were a certain grade level and attending they would be able to stay at Dixon provided they could get their own transportation to get here now I can't tell you for certain that's going to happen but I can say that that was the consensus of the folks that were there well I can say that Mm -hmm. I understand that. But, I mean, that's, we're, we're doing a disservice to the kids. Mm -hmm. Because there's just so many, the classes are so huge. And the teachers can't do all this. So the education is suffering. Well, I, large class sizes are not ideal, obviously. But I can say, and speaking to, to the principal, Mr. Eamon, and if I'm, I don't want to speak out of turn, I won't speak for you, but they're large classes. But they're not so large. I mean, they're fully staffed here. We recognize we have a problem, Mr. Freeman. Did you want to? I mean, our band class is big. Our PE classes are big. Our, our academic classes are pretty much below 30 across the board. The problem with the number of students is we don't have enough classes to grow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we have enough teachers to teach the students we have, but we don't have, like, next year as I get more students, if I'm continuing to grow, I don't have a classroom to put a class of kids there. And so I'm fully staffed right now. My class sizes are below 30 pretty much across the board, except for those certain settings. Mm -hmm. But it is a, it's a matter of I don't have any space. And when I talk about the cafeteria, when I talk about the bathrooms, when I talk about the auditorium, this is an auditorium for a school of 1,100 kids. And it's, it's, yeah, so those common spaces are not, they're, they're over, they're, they're smaller than what they should be. Well, what I'm saying is the grandfather and all those kids in the state is a problem. It's not an answer. Sure. That's, I mean, you're, you're just trying to appease some masses, which is not the answer to the problem. Sometimes people just got to take it, slap in the face and go on. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's just all it is to this. I understand. And, and there's, there, you know, you're certainly not the only person that feels that way. But there's a lot of people who so this is, we understand why you're doing what you have to do. Let's just, you know, let's just do it. Let's pull off the Band-Aid and get it done. And so. And construction in this area is something we're continuing to look at. I can tell you that right now. Construction is something we're continuing to look at for this area. As far as school construction, now what's going on with the developments and all those that are going on, that's a different story, but for schools we are looking, you know, construction down here is another, going to be another focus coming up pretty soon. So I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, for the interim for next year. Mm -hmm. So um, my daughter went to Southwest Elementary just because of where she lived, and then next year she was put in Dixon Middle. Mm -hmm. She originally didn't want to really go to Dixon Middle, she just wanted to go to Southwest, but due to the line, she had to go to Dixon because even though she lived five minutes from Southwest. Mm -hmm. um, for next year, for the high school at least, because middle school is like plastic, or the elementary school, as you said. Um, I, and I don't know how the politics works between the schools and everything like that, but if, if the high schools can talk. And if people that lived up in that area that are just on the side of the Dixon border are given an option between the schools, the, the county or whomever says, you live here, we're going to give you an option, would you mm -hmm. like to go to Southwest next year? And then you just change that. And as long as you know they are willing to get their own 
They are. They are. Yep. So like, put that out there to these parents and these people that live up there uh, and say, hey, we understand you live right down the road from out, from Southwest. Mm -hmm. but, you know, here's an option to alleviate some of the pressure. That's actually, that, that's, that's a great point. And it's actually, I've already been in contact with some people who have asked for that exact same thing. And we absolutely can accommodate that, not a problem. And once we make, you know, once the board makes a final decision on the maps, when we publicize all that, we can publicize that as well. That if you'd like to go ahead and, and you know, you're going to be affected by this, you're going to go to Southwest later, and you just want to go ahead and do it now, absolutely. Yeah, we can absolutely. Option, my mm -hmm. going to Southwest. You, you could, we could certainly accommodate that. <laughs> like, 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 you know, let's just go ahead and get her to go. We can absolutely do that. Not a problem. Um, we've been we've been doing that for years. It's that's always an option that that our that our uh, our our parents have to send their kids to a different yeah, and, school. And that was never transparent to, to me as a parent. Like I didn't know that I could do that. Okay. Talking to the teachers when she was leaving the elementary school and going to the middle school, they were like, "Yeah, well, I mean, we understand where you live, but it sucks. It sucks to suck." Yeah. So that was basically what we were told from the staff. Hmm. Now, so you weren't ever, you just weren't aware of that out of district process? No, okay. So that's something that we need to publicize. Yeah. Okay. Great. Absolutely. Because we were right up the road from Southwest Middle yeah. and we drive 30 minutes to get to the middle school. Yeah. 30 minutes. To get to Dixon Middle School? Because they go to Dixon Middle now. Yeah. Right. I have a, a junior and I have 20 girls that are eighth graders this year, so yeah. this would affect them their sophomore year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're just, they've never... They're really scared. They've never had to switch schools. Sure. And they're kind of hesitant to switch extracurriculars. Um, they're really involved in the band. Mm -hmm. and my son is in marching band, so they kind of want to follow him. Mm -hmm. And they said if they have to switch schools to extracurriculars, they're just probably not going to do it anymore because, you know, they've followed Mr. Science for so long, you know, through my son's high school years. They, that they wouldn't be interested in the band at Southwest? Yeah, doing it at a different school. Just that. But I feel like if they had the option to go to Southwest to begin with, it would have been a lot easier in the long run. Gotcha. Well, you know, when we do those out of district options, you know, part of the problem is capacity. And so we have to look if the school's overcrowded or not, or at capacity like Southwest currently is, you wouldn't have been able to take advantage of that necessarily. I mean, there are exceptions. But it would be difficult because Southwest is already at their capacity. And that's a really small middle school. It is, it is very small and physically small. And so it's, again. I think it would just be useful to even know that it was an option. Like, like it's fair. Five or six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair enough. Yes, okay, sir. Cool. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, but I obviously been doing a lot of thinking since the last time. And every time I drive past this high school, I'm like, God, there's so much land. And just, you know, so have we also thought about just building more Dixon High School? That would be that would be the option. That would be what we would be looking at for construction. And I don't want to put the cart before the horse. I don't want to say we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But when we look at capacity for high school students in Dixon, you know, first off, you know, for a new high school, you're probably looking for 65 acres because you'd have to have baseball fields, football fields, and all that. And land is at a premium around here. But we do have a lot of space here to, to make improvements to this building. Um, but again, that's not that's not an immediate solution to the problem. I mean, that's something that, you know, if we started that process today, we're three years away. Well, I would venture to say that the district thing is not an immediate solution either. It's, it's more just kind of like kicking the can down the road. Because as we said a few times already, the, build, the homes just continue popping up around here. Right. So let's say we redistrict and then, you know, in a few years, it's like, wow, we've got 500 new neighborhoods. What are we going to do now? Again, okay, now let's start thinking about building, right? And so now we're waiting longer. So now we build new buildings and then we redistrict again. So 
I, I would say it's, it's I, I can see why you're saying it's kicking the can down the road, but I would make the argument that we're using the resources we have, which are those available seats in Southwest. It's not ideal, I understand, but it is something that we have to look at and we have to do. And it will give us some breathing room to start looking at our construction options. Okay, so we finish the game and then seriously considering Yes, ma'am. So right now we're just kind of, I don't know, not in a planning phase for construction, but we're planning to plan. Well, planning to, no, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting way to put it. We're planning to plan. Um, I guess for simplicity's sake you could say it that way, but I would say we're further along down the road than just in the conceptualization phase that we under, we're looking at, you know, our, our updated numbers, you know, from our, our, where our population is headed, working with the county, um, you know, to, to get all these projects in motion. Right, and I, I'll tell you why I think about it in that way is because I have a child starting freshman year mm -hmm. in school this fall. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm thinking about it, okay, well, when she gets to eighth grade and is going to start high school, is this going to happen again? Right. Is this going to be another redistricting meeting? Because now we've started about, or, you know, construction happened and we started the building, so we're, we're back at it. it. It just, to me, seems like a lot of moving around for human beings. Like, we're people. These are mm -hmm. our kids. We're not just, you know, palms on the Absolutely, and I don't think it's, anybody. And I don't, you know, don't think that way, but it just, it just feels that way. Sometimes. Sure. Uh, no, I mean, it feels that way because that's your child. Mm -hmm. But say high school was too full, we built an extension. Clifton High School was at capacity, we built bigger hallways and more wings. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, just sitting here and saying, it's like, Anzo County, we have 20 kids, let's just move all these kids around and see mm -hmm. what happens. It's, well, it's kind of strange, you know. Just I, 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 but I would say, you know, in the past few years, we've opened four more schools. So it's not like we're standing still and waiting. And in this area alone, we've opened a middle school and an elementary school. No, ma'am. Not to this point. Well, I know it. And that's why I'm saying we're, we are looking at all those options. So but you're looking, you're looking at just the property, the footprint of the high school and the old middle school over here. Just that footprint is about 55 acres. So we will be looking at probably about 60 acres or 70 acres by the time you build a school large enough. Plus put a football field and a softball field baseball field, soccer field, one of the practice fields, stuff like this. So you're looking at about 70 acres. I don't like, we lived out here. I don't know where it's 70 acres. It's all being built on. I said. So what about building? building up? Yeah, it's not building up. Instead of expanding and talking about more acreage and yeah. building a brand new school, we have a school too. Mm -hmm. Build up. And my high school is like five stories tall. Yeah, I mean, what I mean? Uh, it has to be. It has to be designed that way. And I don't know that Dixon High School is designed, you know, when, you, when you're building a school with multiple stories, you have to design it that way because it changes the footers and the pilings and all that. So I can't say for certain that this school would have been built to support that. There's very sandy soil around here, so you've got to treat it a certain way. Um, no, no, it's, it's fine. We're just here to have a conversation. Two months ago, and bought it in the area based on our kids coming to Dixie. Mm -hmm. And it's moving, you know, moving to the house. And it's like, oh, by the way, you don't need to get Dixie. It's over. Just kind of I know. And, and we, heard, we heard that a lot last week, too, that there are people that bought their homes specifically to go to Dixon schools. And absolutely. When I was a principal, I met a nice lady. She was a Marine wife, and she came into my school, and she said, first you find a school, and then you find your house. And, and we understand that, that that's very important to people. 
and that's why we don't take these decisions lately. Yes, ma'am. Quick question. You had mentioned three years if you were to start today as far as like At least, sure. probably. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. I'm just asking if you meant like the building would be built by three years if you were to start today or if you're saying the whole plan and then build it. Yeah, for, so for North Carolina, the, what's required by statute is called design bid build where we have to design it, then it has to go out for bid, and then we can build it. So we can't just say, we can't just, you know, here's a project, bid on it, and put it up. We have to actually go through the whole design process. process has to be approved by the state and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to since it was going to be like about two years before redistricting would happen, so I was just thinking it's only going to take three years to build, then mm -hmm. you're talking about extra year. It's, it's not fast in supplies right now? Or no, 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 I was just asking for yeah. so it would be, yeah, if, you know, and three years I'm being optimistic because, I mean, this is something like we don't, you know, we're about to start a new elementary school and we're using a footprint we've already used. So the design phase took a lot shorter, but that's still a two year, it's a 600 day construction project um, just from the, from the time you start building to finish. So you're talking a lengthy process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. The redistricting is that just for the high school, not the middle school, or both? It is just for the high school. Because Southwest High Southwest Middle School we can't right now. Because of capacity. Potentially some students, yes, sir. That's how it's working out for us. Sure it is, absolutely, absolutely it is. And um, you know, we, we do have that in some places and we know it's very frustrating. We have some of that in Swansboro where kids will go to Hunters Creek Elementary, then Swansboro Middle, then back to White Oak. We have it in Southwest District where some kids go to Southwest Elementary, then go to Trexler, and then come to Southwest High School. Yeah, so. I just have a feeling that once my younger two, three, technically get up to the high school point, I mean high school's going to be built somewhere out there and probably wind up going there anyway. Right now I'm just worried about it. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Comments? Feedback for the board? All right, well, thank you guys for coming tonight. I greatly appreciate it. I really, really appreciate all your feedback, and it's going to be shared. Um, this is recorded, like I said, so I'll be able to share your feedback with the people that need to hear it. And uh, we have that um, email address. If there's anything else that you can think of, um, no, don't worry about that. I forgot to change the slide. That's tonight. Um, DHS, DHS redistricting at onso.k12.nc.us. If you have more feedback you'd like to share, something comes to you later, please. Um, all of it is very valuable to us as we move forward with this process. Thank you guys very much. Have a great night.